Arrow Zebra Observatory is an iconic scientific instrument and arguably one of the most recognisable around the world. And sadly, on the 1st of December, we lost this key asset when it collapsed. As this collapse was preempted, no one was injured from this event. And luckily for us, there was many cameras set up on it, so we were able to get a bird's eye view of this collapse in detail as it occurred. Before we analyze this collapse, let's rewind a little bit and find out a little bit about Arecibo Observatory, what makes it unique and how it was constructed. Arecibo was the largest radio telescope up until 1997. It was only surpassed recently by the FAST Observatory in China, which is almost double the size. Arecibo's biggest discovery was the fact that it was the first to detect gravitational waves through observing a binary pulsar system. It was also the largest radar telescope in the world. So what this gave us the ability to do was bounce radar waves off distant objects such as Venus and Mercury and determine the rotational spin. Radar is also very useful at determining how far an object is away. Observing near-Earth objects such as asteroids from a telescope, we're not able to accurately determine the distance of that object, at least in enough detail to determine the orbit of that object years in advance. Through radar and bouncing it off such objects, we're able to give enough insight to the distance of that object to determine many years in advance to see where there's a risk of crashing into the Earth. The next best radar telescope is actually 20 times less accurate. So due to the inverse square rule, which states that the further a radio signal travels, the strength is reduced by squared. So roughly as it needs to go there once and come back, the strength of such radio waves is reduced by about 16 times. So it only gives us about twice the distance of accuracy. That is still a long way. So it's a big loss to the scientific community determining those near Earth or asteroids. Now you may not recognize Arecibo for its scientific findings, but maybe it's featuring in the James Bond film, GoldenEye, where the final shots were shot at this location due to its unique features. Ironically, they actually destroyed it inside the film. The construction of Arecibo was completed in the 1960s and its location was chosen due to its unique geographic features, mainly the sinkhole that they built the dish into. They were able to build the three masts around peaks around this sinkhole to allow them to string up and hold the scientific instruments over the dish. In August this year, worrying signs started to show at Arecibo when one of the cables slipped out of the guidelines. Yes, this was concerning at the time, but not highly worrying, as there was five other cables supporting the central dome system. Plans were drawn up by engineers and they are currently shipping out replacement cables to fix the cable that's actually slipped down. However, on the 5th of November, one of the primary cables snapped. Now this cable snapped at about 60% of the design load. Now this is highly concerning for two reasons. Firstly, the determined strength of the remaining cables is unknown as this cable snapped at such a low load. And also, now that we only have four cables left in this system, the load increase on the remaining cables was up to 50% more, which makes it even highly concerning as we do not know the strength of the remaining cables. As why did that cable snap at a lower strength? Was it just a one-off? Was it damaged at the time? Or do the remaining cables have the same limiting factor in strength? After this cable snapped, the planned efforts were put on hold as it was deemed to be a too risky adventure to put people up on that dish that may collapse at any time. And the fact that they're actually hanging new cables, there would be additional weight in the system. That may be the stone that tipped it over the edge. Now, there were some pretty far-fetched ideas of hanging people from helicopters and such as they repaired the dish, but inevitably it was determined it'd be a too risky adventure. So they eventually drew up plans to try and demolish the dish. They never got around to this, as on the 1st of December, the events that we saw earlier took place. Now let's analyze this in detail. Before we get into the analysis, don't forget to smash that like button. It helps get it out to more people and I'll be highly grateful. Now let's get into it. Right now we're on that fateful day of the collapse of Arecibo and we're just seconds away from the event. At a GoPro position at the observation point of the collapse tower. Luckily for us, at the time of this event, there was also a drone at the critical tower observing the cables obviously trying to plan out the demolition of this tower right when the event occurred. 
As you can see, at the time of this event, the drone was really close to the critical tower, observing the cables and what was actually happening there. Luckily for us, we are able to get a really close view of the failure of this tower, as it happens really quickly. To get your bearing points of where we currently are, the drone is looking at the tower with its back facing the dish. So essentially it's in between the tower and the dish itself. So we're looking back away from the dish at this point. So I've slowed down the speed of this event to at least 10% of the original speed to give us some sort of context of how this event occurred. And we can see that it's not just a single failure, but a cascade failure with one after another failing before the whole thing comes down. Now the reason why I've slowed down this footage so much is the speed at which the failure occurs. Even at 10%, you can see it still happens really quickly. So it's a really quick succession of failures that occur in a short period of time. Now, if we are looking at those cables, you can see some of them are painted and some of them are not. The ones that are not painted are due to the internal cables snapping, essentially flecking the paint off. So it means they're damaged. So the paint is there for two reasons. So it's there not only to protect it durability wise, but it also helps to detect when you have little bits of failure in your cables quite quickly. And it will be highly evident. So keep your eye on that cable with the strap around it. The one at the bottom, that is the first cable to snap and you'll see flecks of paint flicking off it quite quickly. And now this is the point where the first of the remaining cable snaps. So now there is only three cables supporting the main dish. So what this has now done is essentially doubled the remaining load in the remaining three cables. Now this load is just not static. There's dynamic actions occurring as Hammer is rocking backwards and forwards. These dynamic actions increase the load even further. So it's more than double the load in the remaining cables. So this quickly overloads the remaining cables. So let's keep an eye on them. As this third cable breaks, keep your eye on the far cable as well, as that one will snap really quickly after that third cable breaks. So now there's only two cables remaining. And now if we keep an eye on that closest cable, it's currently in good condition. You can see that there is no paint currently flecked off it. So it's currently in its prime condition. However, as now there is only two cables remaining, this cable is now highly overloaded. And as you can see, it will unravel itself very quickly. As the flex of paints keeps coming off, you essentially see it unwind itself. And then this is the point where the tower lets go. So now we only have one cable remaining, which is way too much for this cable to hold. And you can see the tower is now aggressively rocking backwards and forwards. As now the dish has essentially gone into free fall. As the load on the remaining cable overloads it very quickly. As this column is now going from what is essentially a compression force into a bending action. Now let's go back to that GoPro to see as the tower comes down. Now, if we're looking at the main dish, you can see there is essentially two structures on it. You have the primary structure that is supported by the cables and the instrument equipment is essentially hanging underneath on rails. So as it comes swinging down, the main instrument equipment will be detached and fall off earlier prior to the primary structure hitting the dome. As it comes down as well, the two primary cables will swing into the catwalk, essentially smashing that apart. Now, if we go back to that critical tower, the original one that the fail occurred, you essentially will see it snap off at mid height. This is due to the column originally acting in primary compression force. It has now has lost the tension force from the instrument equipment. It has now turned into a bending action. So at this critical point, which is the weakest point, as you can see, it's stepping up the tower. So at the bottom of the thinnest point of the tower is where it would be most critical, is where the failure occurs.
This also happens to the remaining two towers, which you'll see will also come tumbling down. Now let's move back to that drone, as it will turn around to watch the dome come crashing down. And we'll see the remaining damage that occurs to Arecibo. As these cables are not small, they are very heavy and were called major damage zone that was underneath them. The damage not only occurred to the dish itself and the primary towers, but also there was damage occurring to the remaining structures around it as well. Also, one of the portions of the columns also smashed into one of the access roads, damaging it. So there'll be quite a lot of work to get this dish operational again. Hopefully there is drive from the international community to bring this iconic instrument back online and it has had some unique finding to the scientific community and it will still be valuable now and well into the future. As you can see, we had a unique observation point of this collapse and the cascading events that led up to the final demise of Arecibo. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did, as I was saying earlier, don't forget to smash that like button. It helps me out greatly. If you haven't subscribed at this point, smash the subscribe button and don't forget to ding the bell to get all the updates. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next week where my episode will likely be on next Wednesday. Bye.